What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Sporting. Today, it is time for our first Champions League final of the Jose Mourinho Challenge. And we are taking on Manchester City. This is actually going to be both ours and Man City's first Champions League final in this save. An English team has gone to every single one, but it's never been Man City. It's been either United or Liverpool. So whoever wins this is going to win the first one in the save for them. This will actually be the first one ever for either of these clubs. Sporting's never even been to a final, and City obviously has never won a final. So somebody's going to win there first. Hopefully that somebody's us. Looking at this Man City team, they're managed by Vincent Company. He actually managed them back in 2025, but he got sacked after like less than a year on the job. They've went through a couple of managers since then, and then they actually rehired him this year, and he's guided them to a Champions League final. The league, however, has not gone as well for Man City this year. They finished fifth in the Premier League. So this final actually means a lot more to them because if they don't win it, they will not have Champions League football next year. And I'm sure that won't go over well with the Man City board. So they've got a little bit extra to fight for. Hopefully it won't make a big difference though. Looking at this Man City squad, they've actually got a couple injuries that are gonna, really gonna hurt them today. They're missing out on Serginho Dest, who's their starting right back. He's out for up to three weeks. And Victor Osman, probably their best striker, is out for, what, five to ten days. So they will both miss the Champions League final. The desk injury is actually really big because their backup right back isn't registered for the Champions League. Holmgren Pedersen is not registered, so he can't play. The only other player that can actually play right back is Federico Diaz, a Uruguayan regen or Argentinian regen that is a center back that can play right back, just not... He's not an attacking right back. So I think he's going to have to start. I don't know who else they'd go with there. The only player that can kind of play that is Tom Kraus, but he actually can't play right back. He can play right wing back. And it looks like Man City are determined to play a 4-4-2. It's the only thing they've played for basically the entire season. So if they're going to stick with that, then Federico Diaz is going to be their starting right back. But we do actually know who their starting left back is going to be. Isaac Bergman Johansson. He is player that we sold to them for 200 million dollars and he's been their starter at left back ever since when we first played them the only time we've actually played them in the champions league group stage a couple of years ago they were playing a five at the back and he was playing the left wing back which i think is the best role for him but now he's a left back in a 4-4-2 which i don't know if it's the best call especially because he's not really done very well in the league he's been okay the first season not quite as good this second season and in the champions league this year he has been awful 6.47 through 11 starts in the Champions League. Center back, they are pretty strong though. They've actually got three pretty good options. So if it was me, I would probably play a three at the back still. Because they've got Ruben Diaz, obviously 32 years old, still ridiculously good. I'm Eric Laporte, 33 years, 34 years old actually. He's pretty good, really good mentally, really good technically. Physicals aren't insane, but still a really good player. And they've got a th good third option as well And Taylor Harwood Bellis. He's a player I've wanted to sign before. He's really freaking good. He probably is better than I'm Eric Laporte. We'll see who they start between those two. But they also have that Victor Osman injury. And because of that, it's probably going to have to switch things up how they're going to line up in the attack because they don't really have any other natural striker other than maybe Ansu Fadi, who can play there very well. He has 17 finishing. He's obviously ridiculously good. Probably will be starting a striker for them today. But the only other player that can really play there is either like Yusuf Demir, who's not natural, but could do it as more of a creative striker. And then we've got this Simon Bach, another region that's not terrible. They might end up starting him. I'm not sure. I wouldn't, but they might. He's got really good physical, so I think he'd be okay. Just not probably the guy you'd want to start a Champions League final if you're Manchester City. And that leaves on the wings. I think Pedri might be playing right mid. I think it's probably, if I was the manager, I would play Pedri right mid. He's really good, but you need to start both him and Phil Foden because they're the two of their best midfielders. But I wouldn't want to play both of them as central midfielders in a 4-4-2 because neither of them can do anything defensively. And in a 4-4-2, you kind of need your midfielder, at least one of them, to be some sort of defensive stability. And Pedri's even worse. He he is just nothing. He does nothing defensively. So I would play Pedri at right mid, play Dem uh, Demir at striker. I would play Foden in the midfield alongside like Ivan Illich, who is a player that actually, I think, was there as a youngster and they actually re-signed him for 71 million dollars he's pretty good he can do a job defensively as well unlike those other two good passer really good physicals they've also got uh rodrigo bentoncourt who is still pretty good he's better defensively might be the better call actually if you want a really good defensive player there pretty good physicals as well so they've got options in the midfield but out wide 
outside of the guys that are going to be starting, which is probably going to be Pedri at right mid. I think this Franca Amadio is probably going to start a left mid. At least I would start him a left mid. He, I think we've looked at him before. He's pretty dang good. He's got some really good mentals, really good physicals. Just kind of lacks an end product. 10 crossing, 7 finishing. 12 long shots aren't too bad. And he's got okay passing, but good dribbling. I don't know. He's Again, he's not probably the perfect player you'd want for a Man City squad in a Champions League final. I think we have better players. And he's probably going to have to start. But outside of that, like I said, if Fati and... Demir is starting a striker. They've got that Bach guy, who I think is fine for a backup. But who else do they have? Like, they don't have anyone else for the wings or anything. Like, Jack Grealish is awful at this point. He is just not very good at all at 33 years old. And then they've got Roberto Fernandez, who's a 28-year-old Mexican region. I don't know how he's 28 years old, but he's pretty solid. He's not terrible. He could play right mid for him. Maybe start, maybe be a solid backup. But there's just not a lot in this Man City squad. I feel a lot more confident beating this than I do Liverpool or Manchester United. It's still not going to be easy. It's still Manchester City. The game still loves them. So, and they've got you know, some ridiculously good players in Diaz and uh, Demir and Foden and Fati, Pedri. They've got some amazing players, but so do we. But unfortunately, we will be missing one of those amazing players. We picked up an injury just a couple days before the match. Mateus Nunez, a pretty bad one as well. Torn thigh muscle. He's out a couple months. So he's going to miss the final, which sucks. But fortunately, we have Bruno Tabata. We was, it was nearly even worse, though, because Gonzalez also got injured about a little over a week before the final. Fortunately, he got back fit in time. So he's going to be good enough to start. If he didn't, I'd have to start Tabata and like Santos or Sugo. I wouldn't feel great about that, even though they're good players. It's just they're still both pretty young and I, I don't know. I, I would not feel super comfortable. They haven't produced at a very high level, really, at any point consistently. But we are going to go with our 4-3-3. I went back and forth about going with this or the five at the back. Ultimately, I settled on this. We've done pretty well playing this against the likes of RB Leipzig, against the likes of Inter. We've played really well using it. So I'm not going to switch it up. This has worked for us. I'm not going to go to the five at the back, even though... It might be the right idea. I think we're good enough. We don't need to do that. I think we can play our brand of football and still win. So the team we're going with, Karna up top next to Thiago, and we're going with Oscar Gonzalez. He just keeps performing whenever he's on the pitch. We do have Sesco as an option off the bench as well, though. Midfield, Tabata as that advanced playmaker. Gonzalez as that Mazala. Polina as the holding player. Gusto, Digne, Ignacio, Ruan, and Harazo. This is a very strong team. We might not have a Ruben Diaz, but Malagusto is better than miles better than whatever they're throwing out there at right back. Obviously, Ruben Diaz is better than Gonzalo Inacio. You can't really question that. But Inacio is not bad either. In goal, they also do have Ederson as well, so he's still there. But we've got Giovanni Harazzo, the best young goalkeeper in the game. One of the best goalkeepers in the game. He's already labeled as a world-class goalkeeper at 21 years old. He is tremendous. I really don't want to hit the submit team button. I'm really excited to finally be in a Champions League final, but I'm also absolutely terrified. It has taken seven years, three attempts in a Champions League semifinals to get here. If we get all the way here and we don't win it, it will be absolutely gutting. All right, enough waffle. We're here to see a final. The biggest match in the series so far. Let's do this. Enjoy the match tonight. Go out there and play your own game. This may be a Champions League final. And that does require some added focus and passion. But we got here playing our brand of football. We don't want to lose sight of that. We need to keep that going. Moments like these are why we play this sport. Go out there and leave everything on the field. We know what we're capable of. Others might not, though. So let's go and show them what we can do. Pedro Gonçalves has been in good form of late and starts again today. How happy have you been with his form? I think he's been doing really well. There were some questions about whether or not he'd be fit enough to play this match, but fortunately for us, he is. And it's a good thing. He's a big part of how we play. We're glad to have him out there. Bruno Tabata seems to be playing in a different position today. Why is that? He can do a lot of different things out there on that pitch. I feel like we could put him in just about any position, and he'd find a way to make an impact. With Mateus Nunez unfortunately going down with injury, we needed somebody to step up and make a big difference in a big match. And we all believe Bruno Tabata is that player. All right, let's look at this Man City lineup. They are going at the 4-4-2. 
They are starting Simon Bach, Fatih at left wing, Foden and Illich, Pedri at right mid. So kind of what we expected. I didn't actually see who was playing a right back for him. I was looking at the front line. But, I mean, it's still a strong squad. Let's see, they got uh, Harwood Bellis is actually playing right back. I didn't know he actually played there. I mean, that's not too bad then. He might not be an attacking right back, but he's a really good player. And sometimes that's just what you need. The first highlight is going to go our way, for, hopefully. It's going to be a cross in from this throw-in down the left-hand side. And we have the first goal in the Champions League final. Gonzalo Inacio, his first ever final. And he scores about 11 minutes in. Who's the got the assist? Was that Lucas Dean? I know he's the one that took the throw in. I think he's the one that put the ball in. He was. And what a header by Gonzalo Inacio. The short throw ends up in a goal. We take the lead. Second highlight is about 26 minutes in. It's going to start with us on a throw in once again. This time on the right-hand side. Gonzalez on the ball. He's going to go for goal. And he scores it. Oscar Gonzalez from outside the box. The young Mexican striker puts Sporting 2-0 up in the Champions League final. Man City had to feel pretty hard done by. We've had three shots in target and two goals. And at the moment we scored our second goal, we had two shots in target. Got the ball from a throw and once again. Chance for a third. But Ruan just heads this over. That will probably be the end of the half. I think it's going to go into halftime with a 2-0 advantage to Sporting. And really, it's been a pretty even match. Even though I enjoy the lead, probably don't deserve it. At least to be up by two. Maybe up by one. We've created some pretty good chances. Man City's haven't been nearly as good. We've had slightly more possession, but... We've just been clinical, which is something we don't always do. Now, some <laughs> Recently, we've had 10, 12 shots on target and zero goals. We have three and two. You never know what to expect with this team. It's important to stay focused in the second half. Don't allow complacency to creep in. That was a great first half performance, but I don't think we saw the best of Man City in that half. That's likely to change in the second half. When you're playing teams of this caliber, no lead is safe. So we cannot lose focus for one second or they will take advantage of it. That's the kind of talent they have on that team. Even with this lead, I don't intend to shut up shop in this second half. Even though we do need to be more tuned to our defensive duties, that doesn't mean we can stop attacking. We were very clinical in that first half. We need to do more of that in this second half. As long as the scoreline stays like it is, Man City will continue to have hope. There are more goals in this game. Make sure they're for us. We are either under 45 minutes away from a great trophy or a massive bottle job. Hopefully it's the former. But Man City, looking like they might have one of their first attacks of the game. They whip the ball in, but Gonzalo Nacio, the goal scorer of the first goal, heads this away. Pedri ends up with it, though. He is dangerous. He finds the ball in. And Nacio doesn't win this. And it falls to Yusuf Demir. <sighs> Man City get a little fortunate there. The ball bounces around the box, but we just weren't able to clear it. And they don't make the mistake. When you give them a chance like that, they will take it. And it is 2-1. Nacio misses the header, falls to Yusuf Demir, and a simple tap in. 2 1, 57th minute, 70th minute now. We're starting with a goal kick. Maybe I should shut up shop. Maybe I should go to the five at the back, but I want to keep scoring. Oscar Gonzalez has the ball now. We got an attack. Isaac Bergman Hansen is looking to defend this. Can he put the ball on? He goes back for Pedro Gonzalez, but Ansu Fadi intercepts. And this might be a Man City attack. He is running out of defense, and he is very fast, and he's a very good dribbler. Yusuf Demir, also fast, also good dribbler, has a chance. But he blazes it over. This is getting nervy. We've got a free kick in a very dangerous area. Lucas Dean, I think, is going to take this. It is. Can he score yet another free kick? Please. Nearly does. He hits the woodwork. We've got another highlight immediately afterwards, starting with Man City. Down this right-hand side, Pedri goes back to Harvard Bellis. The makeshift right back. Goes all the way back to Ederson. Into Laporte. Back to Ruben Diaz. We need to intercept this. Pedri on the ball. This second half, in terms of the highlights, has been all Man City. We've actually had pretty equal in terms of the chances, though. We just haven't seen them. Laporte, out to Isaac Bergman Johansson. If he gets an assist or a goal, I will be, I will cry. Malagusto heads us back to Carrazzo. Good defending. Now can we build from the back? Ruan, out to Inacio. Playing it out to Tabata. Ball over the top. Bruno Thiago. Bruno Thiago. Bruno Thiago. Bruno Thiago. Please be onside. I think he is. I really think he is. I know it's hopeful, but I think he is. Bruno Thiago, the first wonder kid in the series. Homegrown, brought him into the first team last year. He got 50 goals, and he gets a massive goal in the Champions League final. We are back to a two-goal advantage. 83rd minute. I've made the change to go to a five at the back. It is time to shut up shop. We've got a two-goal advantage. We just need to hold on to it for seven minutes and no other added time. Maybe a three-goal advantage. 
Oscar Gonzalez with the second. That's got to be it, right? We're up 4-1 in a Champions League final with about 10 minutes left. Surely we can't bottle it from here. What a game. What a game. I was so nervous after they scored that goal to bring it to 2-1. But Bruno Thiago gets a goal and an assist. Oscar Gonzalez gets his second goal of the game. And it looks like we might be winning our Champions League final. There is three minutes left. And Man City need three goals. They need to score a goal a minute. I doubt that's going to happen. We are going to win the Champions League. I brought in Eric Dyer. This is his last game probably. At least this is going to be his last Champions League match. And he's going to go out playing in the midfield. Oh, who's my last sub though? Who do I bring on in this situation? Who else? Like the game's over. Who do I want to give just the Champions League final appearance to? Tomas maybe. He's been here since the beginning. Maybe he feels a little bit hard done by. He's kind of been put to the wayside by these other younger players that we brought in. But I mean, Daniel Weigel, young superstar, future superstar for us, hopefully. Bragancha also been here from the very beginning. Wouldn't be shocked if he leaves after this, even though I won't be manager. But because I am probably leaving after this game, I'll probably play the Tacha de Portugal final. But this is the goal. This was our goal to win the Champions League. It looks like we're going to do it. Um, I think it's going to be Tomas. Even though Gonzalez and Thiago have been fantastic, I want to give Tomas this game. This will be his last Champions League game for me. I'll take off Bruno Thiago. Gonzalez is on a hat trick. So Thiago Tomas, Eric Dyer, and Bartol Frangic are all on the pitch to see us win a Champions League. Three minutes left. Two. We've done it. Sporting have won the Champions League. It took seven years. In six of those, an English team won the Champions League final. Well, not this time. Man City get to their first of the save. We get to our first of the save. But we're the ones that leave raising the trophy aloft. And it's a dominant victory in the final as well. 4-1. With a team that can be all over the place, this is what we can do. But we could also have 20 shots and zero goals and lose 1-0. So I'm glad it was this one. I'm glad we saw it it on this performance. A 4-1 dominant victory in a Champions League final over Manchester City. And looking at the match stats, it's fully deserved. 4-1 might flatter us a little bit or quite a bit. I mean, they only had three less shots on target, two less shots in general. We had one more XG, though. We had one clear-cut chance. They didn't have any. We had one more half chance. They had slightly more possession, but I thought we played really well. From the beginning to the end, there was that little blip where they got that goal, and they had a couple highlights back-to-back, -back, but for the most part, we held control of that match from start to finish, and we end up winning it. I'm so happy for all of you. Congratulations, and enjoy this success. It's been a wild seven years here. And I've enjoyed every moment of it. But from day one, this was our goal. To accomplish this, to bring a Champions League trophy to this club for the first time in their history is a magnificent achievement. You should all be extremely proud of yourselves. Many of you have been with me from day one. And to you and to everyone who has joined us along the way, I just have to say I'm proud to be your manager. You are all here for a reason. You all bring so much to this team. And we wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for each and every one of you. So enjoy this win. Celebrate it. Moments like this don't come around often. Congratulations, Ryan. How good does it feel to win the Champions League? I'm delighted for everyone involved. It's taken a lot of hard work. But moments like these make it all worthwhile. The match today looked like it could have gone either way. But is it fair to say you were relatively confident that you'd win? I thought we played a really good 90 minutes. Manchester City had their moments, but they were always going to. They are an extremely talented team. But this team is special. And I think they showed the world that today. That was a really impressive performance even considering your recent form, right? Yeah, this team might have its highs and lows, but when we're on, I truly believe we're the best team in world football. And we were definitely on today. There it is. We have won the Champions League. And we've list lifted the quadruple. And we have a chance at the quintuple. If we win this Touch to Portugal final, we will have won every single competition available to us this season. 
What a season this has been. One of our best in the league. We finally win the Champions League. It couldn't have gone any better. This season really couldn't have gone any better. We didn't really have that massive dip like we've had in years past. It seemed to always happen. We'd have like a month long stretch at the very least where we just couldn't do anything. It had it for maybe a game or two, but for the most part, I think we're really good for basically the entire season. If you would have told me we won 4 1 and asked who I thought the man of the match would be, I probably wouldn't say Oscar Gonzalez, but it is. He gets a 9.1. Two goals. What a performance for the 21 year old Mexican international, Oscar Gonzalez. His attributes are really good. They're not like insane like Karna's or Tiago's, but the dude just performs. What a performance that was, but the entire team really stepped up. It was a full team performance, attack, defense. They had that one little goal where the ball bounced around the box and fell to Yusuf Demir. But other than that, I thought we defended tremendously well for the amount of attacking talent that Man City has. And don't forget, we sold them Isaac Bergman Hannesson for $200 million and then went on and beat them in their first Champions League final of the series. That felt pretty good. So what's next? Well, looking at the job market, there's no big jobs available or that look like they're going to be available. Past like three seasons, every off season we've been approached for a, a different big job. But the first time I'm actually ready to move, there's nothing. That's annoying. If you look at the options, I mean, Man City, they're stable. They didn't do well in the league. They're going to miss out on Champions League football after they lost the final. Could we beat Manchester City in a Champions League final and then go to Man City and maybe bring some of the players that beat them in the final to Man City? Possibility. United, I doubt they sack Lopetegui. They finished second. Uh, other than that, like Tottenham, they finished fourth. It's probably good enough for Tottenham to get Champions League football again. Um, Lazio, they finished seventh, but I don't know if I'd really want to go to Lazio. I feel like I can get a bigger job than that. Um, Chelsea, I think somehow he's stable, but Frank Lamp Lampard is managing Chelsea, and they didn't get European football. They finished eighth. So how he's stable... I do not know. I wouldn't be surprised if that job does become available, and it's definitely one I would be interested in. Letico Madrid finished third, though. Really, no big team underperformed this season, which is very annoying. Letico finished third. Real Madrid finished second. Inter finished third. AC Milan finished second. Napoli finished fifth. But I don't know if I'd want to go to Napoli. Bayern won the league, surprisingly. Uh, Barcelona won the league. Arsenal third, so they're probably happy with that. Um, Dortmund second. I don't know. I don't know where I go. PSG won the league. Liverpool won the league. Juventus won the league. So where do I go? Maybe somebody retires or I don't know. Cause like, like I said, there's no big jobs available. So I doubt a manager moves from one of these jobs to Norwich. So where does our future lie? Do I stay at sporting until a job becomes available? Or do I just leave? I don't know. I'm worried if I leave, it might affect my reputation a little bit, especially if I'm away from a job for six, seven, eight months, a year. But there's no reason to stay here. We've completed every goal we had when we came to sporting. I'll leave that decision to future me. Right now, I just want to enjoy the fact that we finally won the Champions League. There's a decent chance there won't be an FM video out on Friday. I've got some big decisions to make, and it might take a little bit of time, but I'm hoping to have the video out by Monday. Hopefully by Monday, we'll have our new team and be ready to start our journey at our second club in the Jose Mourinho Challenge. That went about as well as I could have hoped for. Hopefully that win makes all these seven years of buildup worthwhile. Personally, I think it does. You know, these past seven years have been super frustrating, but that just makes this win that much sweeter. So that's it for step one of the Jose Mourinho Challenge. It's about time to say goodbye to sporting. We've been here for seven years and I've enjoyed almost all of it. And we leave as a legend. We've got some new silverware in the dressing room. Ain't she pretty? If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe and hit the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me and I'll see you next time.